All right, welcome to part one of how I was reborn on the 4th of July. Uh, the story of how I went from being uh, in the military, going to combat, to becoming a lay religious uh, member of a community and uh, an advocate for GI justice. Um, and I actually joined the military for college money. It was before 9-11. Uh, one of my close friends had joined ROTC to become an Army aviator eventually, and another really close friend joined the Army Reserves. And so I just went to some recruiting event. It looked interesting, and I talked to the recruiter about college money. The person at the processing station, the Military Entrance Processing Station, or MEPS, they handed me their book and said, what do you want to do? And I flipped to the, the, the highest college money that they offered, and that was Ford Observer for the Artillery or a fire support specialist. And so that's what I did. And then the recruiter, the processing guy was like, do you want to jump out of airplanes? I was like, sure. And so I landed uh, at the 82nd Airborne Division for my first duty station. And the military and basic training, um, it was the first time where someone told me I could do something and expected me to do it. And so like what I call the gauntlet, it may be different for different services, but it was like a, a, a platform of, increasingly wide platforms in a tower. And I thought, this is bullshit. We're not actually going to get over this thing. Um, and I thought it was just a, a game. So I kind of like played along and we spent hours there, but eventually we did it. And so basic training was the first place where I learned that someone else might know more about my limitations than I do, that I might be a harsher critic of myself than others. And so once I realized I had far greater potential than I ever thought I did, um, I really started excelling. I did really good at my job as a 13 Fox or Ford Observer for the Artillery. And uh, I, I got a, an award for doing really well on division artillery test. And uh, I was one of the youngest, or I was told I was the lowest ranking paratrooper at Bragg to ever pass the Jumpmaster pretest uh, with a first time go. And so I was just surrounded by really good leadership that really believed in me. Um, and I was doing fun shit, like jumping out of airplanes and blowing stuff up. Then the towers fell. And so a bunch of us who didn't have a whole lot of time left in decided to try and get into the units that were going to Afghanistan. When that failed, I decided to re-enlist to go green to gold. Green to gold is when an enlisted member tries to go through cadet command to become a commissioned officer. Um, and so I re-enlisted, uh, went through the whole cadet uh, program, or not the program, the application. When I left Fort Bragg, 10 days, I left Fort Bragg on December 20th. And something like 10 days later was when my unit got tagged uh, to go to the invasion force in Kuwait. And so I missed being a part of that with my my battle buddies from many of them from basic, I missed it by a matter of a couple of days. And that was, a, there were a lot of mixed emotions. So I got to Hawaii, the cadet application came back. I was actually arrested for shoplifting when I was a kid. Um, it didn't turn up in my initial enlistment, but it did when I tried to become an officer. And so I had an option. I, I, I was told I had an option to reapply or to submit a waiver to cadet command or just go ahead and forget the cadet stuff and go to Iraq. And so I chose to not submit a waiver, which meant I was going to deploy. Um, and so I deployed to Iraq uh, in January of 04. I spent uh, about 13, 14 months there. Um, the way that it works in the military is if you spend one day in the combat theater, you get paid for the whole month. So in my mind, I spent 14 months there, but in reality, it was like 389 days, but who's counting except the military. So when I was there um, is when I started reading a Bible because I was bored and I'd gone to youth group after I sh got arrested for shoplifting. But Christianity was always just this thing that I did because everybody else did. And I read um, The Complete Idiot's Guide to the Life of Christ, which might actually be on my shelf somewhere back here. It was an idiot's guide, you know, a dummy's book, but it was fascinating. On one, uh, you know, mission that we had for a couple of weeks, I read the 9-11 commission report and I, I began feeling more complicated emotions about the fact that I deployed to a war that I was increasingly becoming um, convinced was unjustified and immoral. And um, so, yeah, that the, my spiritual political awakening was right there in the sands of Iraq where I felt kind of used. I felt naive. When I came home, I decided to 
take my faith seriously. And I decided that, or I finally, after a lot of prayer and some more study and a New Testament class in the evening that my commander let me go to, I decided that I couldn't remain an artilleryman as a, as a Christian. Um, and so I applied to be a, a non-combatant conscientious objector. Uh, but all in, I was in the military on active duty for just over six years. Um, from February of 2000, when I enlisted to November of 2000, uh, six when I was discharged. And almost immediately before I was even off active duty, I began uh, putting myself in more danger. And next, the next part, I'll talk to you about how I went back to, how I went to Israel and Palestine while I was on active duty and had to grow up my beard because people thought I'd be, you know, kidnapped. And um, then eventually um, became involved in progressive Christian circles and my experience there. So I hope you'll stay tuned to part two. I know this was long, but I think it's an interesting story how I was reborn on the 4th of July. And I hope you'll follow along and or buy the book at the URL above. Thanks a lot.